In 1902, in the basement of the Agricultural Department's Bureau of Chemistry, 12 men sat down to a meal of fine food prepared by a skilled chef, laced with unknown poison. The Poison Squad, as they became known, were a group of volunteers who, in return for eating various potentially poisonous preservatives and having their urine and faecal matter collected by the government, would get fed free food for six months. The idea, brainchild of Chief Chemist Harvey W. Wiley, was to study whether preservatives should ever be used or not, and if so, what type of preservatives and in what quantities. Ultimately, they wanted to prove that the government should have a national policy when it came to preservatives in food and drink. The way he decided to do this was to begin feeding volunteers borax, salicylic acid, sulfuric acid, sodium benzoate, and formaldehyde, where he would use ingredients like broccoli. The first subjects gathered at the hygienic table in the basement for their trial, weighed themselves, and measured their pulse rate and temperature all signs that you're about to have a meal that definitely isn't deadly. They would then tuck into a meal crammed full of borax, a common ingredient in modern day laundry detergent. The squad didn't know which food was poisoned, nor what type of poison they were eating. Initially, the borax was slipped into the butter, but soon the men stopped using it. Then the researchers put it in the milk, the meat, and the coffee. But again, the subjects began to avoid these products which is understandable given how they must have tasted. It's a bit boraxy. In the end, they determined that they could put the borax into a capsule to be taken mid-meal, and that would be absorbed by the food in the stomach. It must have been quite weird for someone whose primary concern was the health of others to be celebrating that they determined the best way of poisoning volunteers, but it was an important step for the experiment, which would go on for a further five years. The volunteers had signed away any rights to hold the government responsible for any illness or death that might result from the poisons. This might seem academic, but the risks they were taking were real, and the experiments only stopped when the poisons made the volunteers so sick that they couldn't function. For example, through vomiting, the inability to work, or other stomach aches and more vomiting. It's worth repeating that the only benefit these men were given was a free meal, stuffed full of delicious formaldehyde. But before you start feeling sorry for these volunteers, take a look at their excellent Christmas menu. Apple sauce, borax, soup, borax, turkey with borax, borax with canned string beans, sweet potatoes, white potatoes, turnips, borax, chipped beef, cream gravy, borax with cranberry sauce, celery, pickles, rice pudding, milk, bread and butter, tea, coffee, and a little borax as a treat. And not a sprout inside. Their doses increased as time went on, from half a gram at the start of the experiment to four grams by the end of the five-year project. By the end, they had studied the effects of boric acid and borax, salicylic acid and salicates, benzoic acid and benzoates, sulfur dioxide and sulfites, formaldehyde, copper sulfate, and saltpeter. Of these, copper sulfate was especially concerning because eating a lot of that compound can damage blood cells, liver, kidneys, and even result in death. Although, as the experiment was designed to test the safety of various poisons with no liability for the government, that was basically the point. The experiment eventually led to the Meat Inspection Act and the Pure Food and Drug Act, which regulated preservatives that had been found to be safe for human consumption to be added to food, as long as it wasn't used to cover up the use of ingredients that were unsafe. Finally, you might be wondering why only men were allowed in the poison squad. Was it chivalry, or some old-fashioned notion that you shouldn't deliberately poison women? Probably not. Wiley was a misogynist who doubted the brain capacity of women and referred to them as savages. Savages who clearly weren't up to the noble task of eating a buttload of poison and seeing if it gave them diarrhea.